Transport Workers Union is making a statement about the ongoing arbitration case with Qantas. We're going to take you live to Sydney now. Thanks very much. It's Tony Sheldon, National Secretary of the Transport Workers Union. Today is a very historical day because Qantas is actually fighting its own workforce so that it can outsource tens of thousands of jobs within this country at literally at hundreds of dollars a week less, with less wages, less training and less conditions. Qantas has announced under cross-examination that they have no intention to employ another person in the Qantas company. Under the dis dis disillusional position from this company that somehow the Qantas icon, the iconic company that we are all so proud of in this country now has no place in Australia. We've seen the triple whammy, them closing down route services in Northern Territory, turning around and executing jobs in the engineering area of Qantas after such a sufficient, efficient and very productive workforce that's made this icon so iconic that it's been mentioned in movie after movie in news announcement after news announcement about the capacity for this airline to be the airline that when all else fails, it will still fly. To have the third whammy with the company now saying they're breaking up the Qantas group between Qantas International and Domestic. What Alan Joyce says when he bags Qantas International and undermines his own airline, what he doesn't tell the travelling public, that since the GFC and including the year of the GFC, there has been increase after increase after increase of passenger numbers in the Jetstar Qantas group. Over 100,000 more people are flying with that group than were flying before. This is an airline that has been undermined by its own CEO, its own chairman of the board, and the people that have made this airline great. In just the recent announcement by the Fair Work Ombudsman following a Senate report and Senator Glenn Stills with us here today, saying the Fair Work Ombudsman should investigate the employment of Thai nationals at $400 a month flying domestic routes for five to seven days. Alan Joyce said to the Australian community in response to those questions in the Senate, that if I have to pay Australian wages for Australian work, then I'll close down the airline in Darwin and Cairns. Well, I say this to you, Alan Joyce. It'll take a bigger man than you to threaten this country and its economic future. And it's going to take a bigger man than you to turn around and drive this airline into the ground, because we're not going to let it happen. Alan Joyce has made a very clear decision. And I don't think it's any surprise that Buchanan's left from Jetstar, the architect of wiping out Australian jobs and Australian wages. I don't think it's any uh, quirk of circumstances that the Fair Work Ombudsman investigation has come at the exact same time as Buchanan's gone. We've, I'm now calling on the Minister for Immigration, calling on the Tourism Minister, Martin Ferguson, to stand up for Qantas workers and prosecute Qantas and the Jetstar group for its breaches of immigration visas and bringing workers into this country to do Australian jobs on the wrong visas. They admitted to it last week that's what was happening. The government has to step in and prosecute Qantas rather than Qantas getting away again with an outrageous attack on Australian workers, Australians' conditions and Australian security. It's not a question about whether you're a Thai worker or a Singaporean worker. It's about justice, rights and training and skills within this country. It's about a company who has to be held to account an Australian icon that has a responsibility to be iconic, not the lowest common denominator in the aviation industry as it stands at the moment. I'm not open for questions. Tony, the comment that you to, is that in the arbitration or in the Well, there's a couple of things. There's been a comment by Qantas uh, in, the, uh, in the arbitration hearing that they will never employ another person in Qantas again. And that was made just the last seven days. It was uh, Matt Lee, who's the senior, one of the most senior operational people in the executive of Qantas, under cross-examination, unequivocally said he will not 
and they will not employ another person in Qantas again. They will not employ anybody, certainly in Australia, an Australian person in Qantas again. And what that means, in essence, that they will outsource within this country to the lowest price, the lowest skill, the lowest conditions and the lowest performance, as they'll do in this country and overseas. And what that means to directly the Australian community, that when Alan Joyce gets his 71% wage increase, which he's awarded himself, and an extra $2 million a year, he's throwing Australian workers on the scrap heap that made this company so successful and been so successful for the last 20 years. Tony, what do you want to see out of these arbitrations? Look, I think what's quite clear, and that is that in these arbitration, uh, there should be an obligation on this company for when work is outsourced to be paying the same rates and conditions, have the same training and have the same performance for clients that fly on our planes to have the security that they've got the right sort of people that are making the planes safe. That's what should be an obligation on Alan Joyce, the Qantas Group. And any failing of that does require a very fundamental shift then in the Industrial Relations Act. Because if this court finds it hasn't got the power to do it, and that's what Qantas is arguing, it's management prerogative to do over workers whenever they want, whether they export jobs overseas or outsource jobs within that, this country. Well, I don't think that's management prerogative. I think the community has a right to have a say about that. And Alan Joyce and his Milton employer strategy is wrong, wrong and wrong. Are you talking about outsourcing pilots? The company has made it very clear. They've now got in some of their um, operations, such as Jetstar uh, and other parts of the Qantas Group, where they have, they'll have 12 different workplace arrangements on their planes for flight attendants. 12 different arrangements that'll go all the way down to $400 a month for a Thai worker to somebody who's getting minimum strain standards. That is not the way that an Australian company should operate. I don't think that ethics is something that should stop at when, you, when you leave the church. I think it's something that should apply to everybody, whether you're in business, you're in the community, or whether you're the CEO of Qantas. Is this not the reality of an international company these days, though? Well, I'll tell you what, that's why we have governments to regulate these companies that get up to these sorts of inappropriate actions that don't meet community expectations. Let's not leave it to the market to make a decision, because Alan Joyce has made it clear, I'll bring Thai workers in and pay them $400 a month. Let's say to the government, prosecute them, hold them account and defend the Australian community against this rampacious attack by the Qantas management on the Australian community. Uh, this is Jetstar, oh, this is Jetstar um, stuff that's going on. Jetstar say they're going to fight the claims, well, they say they're not employing Thai workers on domestic routes. What's your response to that? What a joke. This is the same people that said they woke up one Saturday morning after being paid an extra $2 million and decided to strand 100,000 people around the country. That there was no plan, no strategy, and then turn up to court some four hours later with six metres worth of documents and 24 lawyers. You, they're seriously trying to say to the Australian public that they're going to defend employing people at $400 a month and Thai workers rather than Australians. They had the, the showiest Dreamliner exploitation the other day where there will not be one Australian engaged on those Dreamliners. They've already made it clear that they're going to go to the low-cost carrier rather than the Qantas icon. This company couldn't tell the truth if their life depended on it. Well, unfortunately for us, is the lives and livelihood of thousands of people in this country are now in the, uh, in the conveyor belts of the Qantas slaughterhouse, and we're not going to let them be slaughtered. They're not actually defending Thai workers on domestic flights. They're actually saying it doesn't happen. Well, isn't this typical from Qantas, the Jetstar group? They turn around, they have, there's eight witness statements, eight sworn pieces of evidence, there's a pile of documents in the court themselves have admitted to having people working on domestic flights as Thai workers. Alan Joyce said it himself and now they're saying they've got nothing to do with it. Well, this company is, a, a, is lying, lying, lying and will not take the responsibility that it should. It's hoping for an Abbott government. That's all I can uh, envisage. They want an Abbott government so they have a right to turn around and jettison Australian jobs. And I'll say this very clearly to Chris, 
Bowen. You have a responsibility to the Australian community to prosecute Qantas for its breaches of the Act, the Immigration Act, and exploit, allowing those workers to be exploited in this country. You're the person who's supposed to be defending our front line and our jobs. Have, they take that responsibility up and drive it home to Qantas's account, to make Qantas accountable. So I'd just ask um, uh, Jeff Farmer, who's a very senior official uh, with the Teamsters Union, over 1.4 million Teamsters in the US, uh, who's here um, to talk about uh, the Qantas campaign. We'll have a word while we speaking briefly. Thank you, Tony. I just want to say that the reason we're here is we're standing shoulder to shoulder, shoulder with, the, with the Transport Workers Union of Australia and the thousands of dedicated, loyal and committed workers who work for Qantas Airlines. What we, what we are hearing at, uh, on this visit is nothing short of despicable. What we're seeing from this company is a kind of corporate behavior that needs to be reined in. And, and our, it, we're, we're committed. We've, we represent tens of thousands of workers in the airline industry in North America and around the world. Uh, flight attendants, pilots, mechanics, and ramp workers. We're proud to represent those workers. We're facing some of the same issues in, in terms of defending their lives and their livelihoods that, that, that Tony and, and the TWU is facing here. But we have, not, we have not seen corporate behavior this egregious in all of our dealings with, with employers in, in the airline industry in North America. So that's why we, are, we believe very strongly that it's important for the Teamsters Union, 1.4 million members led by President Jim Hoffa to stand shoulder to shoulder with the TWU because we're concerned that if this kind of behavior is allowed in Australia, it's going to spread throughout the globe. Thank you very much. Any questions, sir? Your name? Je Jeff Farmer, direct, director of organizing for the International Brotherhood of Teamsters. Jay. I'd just like to ask, as um, one of the uh, employees here, Grant, a um, very proud Qantas employee. Yeah, um, I'm in a delegate at Brisbane Airport. Um, I've, I've tw 22 years of service with uh, Qantas, and along with my colleagues, we're disillusioned with the way Alan Joyce is running our airline into the ground. Um, he's given away all of our uh, profitable routes to Jetstar, uh, and we're, we're looking now. He's split us up into domestic and international, and I'm telling you now, with the flights we've lost, uh, the international is looking like a carcass. Uh, we're getting no new aircraft. And we just can't understand why uh, he can't give a loyal workforce. And we haven't lost faith. We still love Qantas, and we're still strong. And uh, we've just been up to the fair work now, and uh, and uh, we're progressing through this. But no one's lost faith in Qantas. We believe it's every citizen's right in Australia to have a national airline to service their country. We don't want to be relying on overseas nations to to look after our interests. And every Australian should be very, very worried about the way they're, they're, they're deteriorating our country, uh, company in this country. And, uh, yeah, so we're still strong and, and we want to get a good result out of this. It's good for all the employees and will uh, flow down to other industries as well because we don't want to be the ones to start a floodgate opening where employers treat their employees like Alan Joyce does. We just want a, a, a pay rise, which we believe is, is, is something that they can afford. Uh, Alan Joyce, we're, we're after 5% a year. That's all we're after. We've taken two pay freezes to keep this company going in the past, just to help out Qantas, because we believe in this company. We, are, we, we love it. That's why we've been there for 22 years. Um, and uh, you yeah, just want a, a fair outcome. Outsourcing. Yeah, the outsourcing too. That, that's really affecting us, because they're, they're the go-to people. Uh, they bring them in on their days off without paying them penalty rates, uh, which is something that, that over the years, uh, as Australians, are uh, working Saturdays, Sundays, uh, and coming in on your days off, where, where it does affect your family life and everything, uh, deserves some sort of penalty. And these people aren't getting it. And, and everybody's desperate these days, so the companies have got all of our workers, especially as low-paid ones, right in the right square. They've got their foot on their neck, and you, you move out of place, you've gone. There's no respect for the worker anymore, and we'd like to see that turned around, and we'd like Alan Joyce to do that for us. Uh, and obviously he's probably not going to, but, you know, he just doesn't understand what he's doing to our company. Uh, Grant Mitchell. Uh, I'm a Qantas worker at Brisbane Airport. <coughs> Thank Senator Glenn Stirl um, is also a uh, Western Australian Senator. Uh, Glenn Stirl. Yeah, thank you, Tony. 
Uh, look, I'd uh, just like to send one very clear message out to the mums and dads of Australia. As a West Australian senator who was previously employed as a union organiser proudly representing Qantas employees at the Flight Catering Centre in Perth, to the mums and dads, I see absolutely nothing criminal or wrong of a mum and dad wanting to see a good paying Australian job for their children. And I will stand shoulder to shoulder with the Transport Workers Union. I'm standing shoulder and shoulder, shoulder to shoulder with Qantas employees. This is not some backyard little transport company. This is our major airline, an icon of Australia. And I see nothing wrong with these workers wanting to protect, may I just get this very clear, their rates and conditions of pay that have been negotiated, Tony, am I right, over the last 20 odd years. Yes. Negotiated arm in arm with the employees, with the Qantas management. Not, back, not arms turned up behind backs. All of a sudden Qantas doesn't want to employ their workers in negotiated enterprise agreements. So that the mums and dads of Australia in your lounge rooms, look at those babies running across the floor in front of you. And you should be thinking the way I'm thinking and I know the way Tony is thinking and the way these men and women behind me are thinking. They want the same for their kids. Please take that in mind and let's keep Qantas accountable. Australians, Australian jobs and a quality of pay and life. Any questions? Yeah, Senator Glenn Stirl, two ends please, I feel naked with one. Okay. Western Australian. West Australian Senator and I was chair of the committee that looked into the uh, Qantas inquiry. Fantastic. The RAC committee, but that's two R's. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, mate. Thanks, mate. Yeah. Well, that was Tony Sheldon, National Secretary for the AWU on the Qantas arbitration case. He continued to attack CEO Alan Joyce and the airline's decision to employ foreign workers.